thank you all for coming today. Um, can't hear me. Yeah. Um, so I've been at the Vet Center for about a year and a half now. Uh, came there from the VA clinic. So I can drive. We're there for about a year and a half there also. Uh, the Center. How many of you know what the Vet Center is? That's great. Um, before I went over to the vet center, I didn't even know what it was. And I'm a veteran also. Um, I'm a Navy veteran, did four years. I had a year left when 9 11 happened. I was forward deployed in Japan, and uh, it got really interesting after that. So, um, I didn't quite make it to Afghanistan, but we did a lot of support for them. Um, so, talking about PTSD, um, prior with Penny Youth Corrections, where I started with the VA, did a lot of substance abuse stuff, not a lot of trauma stuff, and then I came to the VA and the Vet Center, and it was all trauma, PTSD kind of stuff. So, does any of this stuff come to mind? So they didn't talk about it. So 50 years later, and now they're 
are starting to retire, they are, have a lot of time on their hands, they're starting to remember that stuff that they experienced over there. And now we're getting a lot of email guys. The current conflict guys, we're reaching out to them, trying to get them to come in before um, they show up all back to the back of the um, Things about military people, um, they're stere stereotyped, very rigid and flexible, conformist. Do what I tell you, okay, I'll go do that. Um, difficulty to transition from military to civilian life. That's a big part of the death center. We do readjustment counseling. Um, so uh, getting to readjust to that civilian life. What do you guys think would be hard for a civilian to readjust for a better to readjust to? PTSD. It's an experience. 
exposure to a trauma. It could be anything. War trauma is a big one that we hear about. Um, and in the past, there wasn't like World War II type stuff. They had shell shock, battle fatigue is what they called it. But you're dealing with the brain. It's hard to, it's taken years to figure out how to do this. So, um, so exposure to trauma, car accidents can cause it. Um, seeing um, something traumatic, you don't have to be necessarily involved with it, but seeing it. Um, the people that we work with um, are drone pilots that that center can work with. Um, so they're hanging out in an air conditioned box in Nevada, but they're bombing people in Iraq or Afghanistan. So they're just witnessing the destruction. Um, recurrent and voluntary memories of the event. They can be walking into Walmart and have sort of a flashback from something that happens. Um, Fourth of July should be a great time for veterans, right? What happens here on the Fourth of July? Fireworks are going off, big, loud bangs. That's reminding them of being over in Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, avoidance of stimuli associated with the event, um, watching movies, lots of great war movies that are out there. Not so great for veterans that have experienced trauma. Some, it's okay, they're okay with it, but with PTSD, it brings back a lot of memories, and they'll have nightmares with that. Um, staying away from fireworks, staying away from crowds, it's um, an ability to remember important aspects of the event. You look at childhood trauma. Um, children can totally forget their trauma happened. Um, same with combat type PTSD. And then something can happen or they can do a therapy or something totally different, start talking about things. And, Holy cow, I had this that happened to me. And so we'll talk about things often begin with three months of the event. Not, may not develop until years later. Um, severity and duration can vary. So, with PTSD, sometimes it's hard to get a diagnosis for PTSD. For one, you have to have a trauma that happened. Um, but then, trying to fit everything into it is it maybe just anxiety? Is it depression? Um, so, with the VA, uh, people can do claims. For PTSD, um, you get some compensation for it and being able to take what they're doing now and how it relates to the trauma that they have are having. Developing trust can be a big deal. Um, when I think talking to like my Afghanistan and Iraqi vets, um, you're working with local people sometimes. They're doing your laundry, you're cleaning your areas type stuff. And then the next day, you find out that they find an IED or they're shooting IED type of stuff. So trust can be a huge thing. So who gets PTSD? Anyone that has experienced trauma can. Um, like I said, sexual trauma, military trauma, trauma in general. Can. Um, can be influenced from prior trauma. So a lot of guys that I talk to, or gals, um, have experienced some sort of trauma in their past or multiple traumas. Um, it's kind of so when you think of like a domestic violence or um, sexual trauma type thing, that may only happen one time. Um, so it's pretty easy to pinpoint. Okay, this is what happened to you. Um, let's talk about it. When I talk to, I have one guy that I can think of. He was over there 13 months, I think. And uh, just trying to say, okay, so what was a really bad time for you to think about? And he's like, well, for one, there was never a good time. So the whole time I was over there, it was really bad. I'm like, think about what you did. You didn't help out anybody in Iraq or talk about what these schools or that kind of stuff. Like, it sucked the whole time I was there. But what was going on over there? We were constantly getting shot at. We were trying to help the police forces uh, take over so we could leave. And they were the guys shooting at it. 
so you're always on constant guard. Um, are these people my friends? I'm trying, we're trying to help them out. But are they somebody that's going to be shooting at me tomorrow? So, and then on top of that, rockets being launched at them, um, IEDs. Um, really hard to focus on this one trauma. So, 13 months of trauma is really hard for him to come up with a specific thing. Um, types of support after trauma can affect symptoms. So, if you come home and have very, um, very supportive people in your life, that's very helpful. Come home and like our Vietnam guys, they didn't talk about it, so they didn't have the support they needed. Um, the military is doing better. Um, it's still not great, I don't think. And uh, transitioning our veterans. Um, and before being on deployment, you didn't want to say I had PTSD. If you were thinking I'm gonna do my 20 years and get out, that could be cause for them kicked out for their medical treatment. I was working with a Navy veteran on the submarines. He had really bad depression while he was in the Navy. But he didn't want to go get on medication because he would lose his clearance to be on submarines. So instead of going and getting on medication and dealing with the depression, he had depression underwater. Feet underwater, how deep they go. Which is not a good thing. So they are doing better at um, recognizing, let's treat the problems at a high level. Um, victims of trauma related to physical and sexual assault face their greatest risk, risk of PTSD. So that is personal type stuff. So if somebody is trying to hurt you, sexual assault on you, there is a great risk of PTSD. How much? Eight percent of the American population have PTSD. There's a study. Um, they're doing studies on PTSD all the time. Um, for Vietnam veterans, about 31 percent um, of veterans deployed to Vietnam had PTSD. Um, and probably going up with more that are retiring and having that more time. Really high divorce rate. Um, at least uh, one divorce for our guys. Um, at least <coughs> about 50 percent, at least twice. We have a group of about six guys, and at least four of them are on their fourth marriage. But they've lasted 24, 25 years. So, so they found that supportive person that's taken the time to um, deal with what's going on with them. Learn about the um, <coughs> support. Realize that it's kind of a mental health condition that um, is going on, not towards them, but something's going on in there. So, Gold Floor veterans, about 12%, are current conflict, about 14%, which I'm pretty sure is going to go up once they uh, come home and start dealing with stuff and uh, slow their life down. A lot of our um, OEF, OIF guys, what are they doing when they come back? They're not staying in the Getting jobs. That's part of it. Um, go to school. Do your four years. Hey, we're going to pay for your bachelor's degree. So why don't I go to school? That's what I did. Um, so you're very, very busy with So that kind of keeps the numbers down. What is OEF for? Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Stuff that happened after 9-11. Okay. Um,
stuff. Oh yeah, OIS stuff, Iraq. Um, first time we went over there, had big burn pits that they were burning everything. Um, next to my base in Japan, they had a, it wasn't part of the government, but it was a medical incinerator. <laughs> Medications, um, antidepressants is the main medication we use. Um, there are a lot of anti-anxiety stuff that we do use, but it's not as recommended. We're trying to pull back from that because that the anti-anxiety stuff takes away the feeling. That's what you're going with. So if we are doing treatment and we're talking about this stuff, I don't want you to take your medicine, your anti-anxiety stuff. I want you to feel what's going on with you. I don't want you to go home. A lot of the Vietnam guys, even the Kurds, um, a lot of the guys did. Um, I always say the Navy turned me into an alcoholic. There was a bar half a block from our barracks. That was the place to hang out. Um, I don't drink anymore, which is nice. Um, they do have uh, medication for nightmares. Um, sleep is huge when dealing with PTSD. Sleep is huge for anything. If you're getting a few, night, or a few hours of sleep, not six or eight, because nightmares are waking you up, then you're not going to be able to deal with sleep. Um, pain is also uh, an issue. So you get blown up, uh, you carrying your 1,600 pound backpack that the army guys wear, um, it affects them. So, getting good sleep, stuff for nightmares. Um, I had a group with a lot of Vietnam and younger guys, and we were talking about um, their sleep. One guy said, Well, I got a CPAP, that has helped my time. And like 90% of my group had a CPAP. So, making sure they get uh, sleep. Healthy living, exercise is a big deal. 
exercise releases endorphins, keeps you healthy. But if they're all beat up from war, sometimes aren't from the exercise, eating well and sleeping well, and staying busy. So I'll have them. Um, let's plan out your week. What are you going to do this week? For me, if I have a three-day weekend, I got big plans. I'm going to get stuff done. If I don't have a plan, nothing's going to get done. Oh, we'll get to it tomorrow. Let's go do this. Um, for people with PTSD or depression type stuff, let's plan out your day. Let's keep you busy. Talking about work type stuff, how can veterans benefit you? Um, so leadership skills. Um, it totally blew me away. 18 years old. Sent me to Japan, and here's the aircraft you're going to be working on. Worked on helicopters. You're going to, we're going to train you to inspect this aircraft and make sure it doesn't fall out of the sky. <coughs> ah. um, that's a lot of stress to put on somebody. So, um, leadership skills. Um, 21 years old, I had a crew of people that I was over, making sure the maintenance got out on the house helicopter. Leadership is huge. You think um, somebody does 20 years and they're retiring out of the military, they've usually been over a lot of people. So, happens at a young age. Um, dedicated to accomplishing the mission. Um, we go into work, sometimes we work 14, 15, 16 hour days, um, make sure the helicopter's got it. Got out, was going to school, got a job at Home Depot. Uh, selling flowers in the apartments here at the action section. Then we're totally swamped and everything, and somebody comes up, hey, I gotta go on my break. Hey, these guys need to buy flowers. I gotta take my break. Um, so I thought, to me, that was, we got to sell these flowers, we want them to whatever. Um, the military people are definitely dedicated to getting the job done. Learn quickly and strive to excel. Um, military training, you go to boot camp, you're getting like six hours of sleep at night if you're lucky. Um, same like I went to like four or what I was in. But they just pound everything into you. Um, went to boot camp, they sent me to Florida to go to school over there, eight hours a day, learning about avionic kind of stuff. So they teach us quickly and pretty efficiently. Um, they work well in a team environment. When you're in the military, it's you talk about an army of one. Um, it's not just you, but it's your whole team. It's a very team oriented. Um, and work well with little supervision. Tell me to go do something, I'm going to get it done. That's how most military members are. Very helpful to my whole staff at the Vet Center are all veterans. And they do a great job. To support veterans into reintegration. If they have mental health issues, have them go talk to the VA. Have them come to the vet center. Um, with the vet center, we're really easy to get a veteran into. Have them bring in their DD-214, we can see them today. So, and to me, I've always thought therapy is good for anybody. I'll teach me some life skills. When I first started, Therapy as a counselor. And in my internship, I had people come in and um, saying, Well, we're planning on getting a divorce, but this is the last ditch effort to see if we can save the marriage. Well, we'll try, but it sounds like you're on the way out. I had this couple that came in and said, Hey, marriage is good. Our communication just sucks. We want to get some skills to improve our marriage. It's like, You guys are awesome. Um, so I'm a fan of therapy. Yeah, so. um, social role functioning, that we were talking about, just reintegrating it. You know, what's going on? You're coming back. What's your job as the father and the mother of this house that I've been taking care of all year? Just let them know where they can fit in, what they can do. Relationship functioning and family life, PTSD, there's anger, there's yelling sometimes. So being able to talk about what's going on, why is that anger, what 
Spiritual functioning, um, sometimes there's a lot of guilt that comes with what they've done, why they've been deployed, um, being able to have a spiritual or religious type person to talk to can be beneficial. Plus it gets them out of the house. A lot of times um, veterans like to isolate. So being able to get them out of the church or some sort of activity. Keeping their physical health going, very beneficial. Financial well-being can be a big thing. So the military, they pay for everything. When I was single, I didn't have insurance to worry about, but I had a doctor I could go to all the time. I could go eat at the galley, so I didn't have to worry about that. They pay, I had a barracks room, so I didn't have rent. I had cable TV, didn't have to pay for it. Um, so they covered that. All my money was, let's go have fun and buy toys. It's pretty awesome. When a military person gets out, how do they die? Death free. You're going to take out a chunk for insurance. i got to pay electricity. I've got to pay my mortgage. Um, so I don't have all this free money. So a lot of veterans get in financial trouble. Or they go on deployment and they saved up all their money because they couldn't spend anything. I got all this money. I'm going to go have a good time. Buy me a big truck with big wheels and everything. So being able to say, you know, where's all of our money going? The pledging. So how can family members support someone with PTSD? Learn about PTSD. And stuff like this. Um, online, there's tons of stuff. The VA on their website, you just punch in uh, PTSD, and it's one of the first um, websites that comes up. There's a lot of valuable information on there. Um, go to their doctor's appointment. Going to the VA, or you know somebody and they have a spouse, hey, you going to your doctor's appointment, kind of letting them know what's going on. I've seen lots of people that they'll come in and have a great week last week. Come in, come talk to me, I haven't seen them in a couple of weeks. And they come in, yeah, everything's going great. And then I look at their medical records from seeing their VA doc or something, and maybe they had suicidal thoughts. Well, what was going on with this two weeks ago? Oh, I totally forgot about that. Last week was so good. That's very healthy information. Oh, just didn't deal with that. So being able to go to a doctor's appointments with them can be very beneficial. Listen to them and understand if they want to talk. If not, don't push them. It's just going to push them away. But say, hey, if you want to talk, I'm here for you. I want to understand what you went through. But they don't always want to talk about it, so. But sometimes they do. Just to be a listening ear. Not to be like, well, why did you do that? Or that kind of stuff. Usually they were under orders, or somebody was fired at them, so they had to fire them. Planning family activities together. You know, going to the hot springs this weekend or something. You're coming with us. We're just going to the column restaurant. physical activity, exercise, and stuff. Encourage contact with family and close friends. Um, and I highly suggest veterans get on Facebook or keep in touch somehow with the guys you were deployed with. That. So you can talk about that. Um, had a guy, a Vietnam guy in my group yesterday, just got back from a reunion of his just the whole group that he was kind of under. And they have a, every year they have a reunion. Um, he's been going to it for years, and nobody that he really knew has showed up. This last one, last weekend, somebody came in. Hey, was uh, is anybody here that was in this particular unit? Um, and they got together and were able to talk and stuff. So being able to talk to people that he knew, Facebook's been great. Sometimes I hate Facebook. Um, but to be able to find people that weren't so easy before. Uh, and then as caretakers or spouses or people that just know veterans that are caring for them, caring for yourself. Um, 
think of if you're on the airplane and they talk about the oxygen mask coming down, you put the oxygen mask on first, uh, and then take care of your kids. If you're worried about you know, the oxygen mask on your kids, you're going to pass out. So being able to take care of it for yourself, you know, doing the exercising, doing uh, me time. Questions overall, yes? So are you able to help uh, folks that have been discharged, uh, whether it's dishonorable or just discharged from their service? At the vet center, we can. Okay. We kind of think of it as they probably did well um, at one time, and then they got deployed, and that messed them up somehow. And because of that, they did some stupid things, did drugs, got a DUI or something, got kicked out. But we're going to take care of it. My father was an advocacy for the Navy, um, helping dishonorable to get, get benefits and stuff like that. It's been a nice push, and I think they should know that their service is there. I had a close friend. I was thinking about what you said about an alcohol, you know, how alcohol made you. They went over to Iraq, and when they came back, they continued to have it, and they took a senior officer and got into a DOI accident. So they were discharged after they had already done their tour. And... Uh, I always thought that's kind of unfair. I mean, it, they paid the price of what the DUI was, but why couldn't they still get the services for the mental health? Right, yeah, and you think about it. Um, come back, do something like that, the Navy or the military is kicking you out, so you're probably got a bad taste in your mouth, so you don't want anything to do with it, so you're not filing any sort of claim saying, you know, I got messed up while I was over there. Yeah. That's kind of why I did that. But now you guys don't want to help me because I got my so um, we're big advocates for that. Cool. And in our office, we have the state of Montana benefits people, and they do all that. Any other questions? So we've got at least one military spouse. Any others? Well, I thank you guys dealing with them. And, uh, I know it's not easy. Uh, many military members. She's a Marine. <laughs> so, uh, and she works with me. Um, but any questions, um, feel free to call us. We have pamphlets back there. There is a veteran stand down that's happening tomorrow at the Shrine Auditorium. Um, that is for all veterans, um, it's to help with homelessness for veterans, but free lunch for all veterans and um, all the services that are happening. That's for night two. Night Know any veterans? Let them know. It's supposed to be a nice lunch. So, don't know that. Any other? Kind of. Um, I don't. I don't see a lot of homelessness here, but there is veterans, um, and some just they like that. They like to stay away from people. They've got their spot that nobody messes with. Um, a lot of them, a lot of veterans moved to Montana just to be away from the people. Um, so Montana's a great place for that. Um, not necessarily for homelessness, but uh, not a lot of people, population wise. They can get a lot saying, I just want to get a cabin in the woods and live there and not have to talk to people or anything. Which isn't necessarily a healthy thing. Isolation. Don't have to go to Walmart. You hear that a lot. I hate Walmart. <laughs> I will drive to Laurel because it's not as busy. Just so I don't have to. Hey, those of us without PTSD will do that. Yeah. <laughs> What's funny is the Walmart on King is the highest volume Walmart in the United States. Isn't that crazy? In the United States. Yeah. And I came from Utah and we had 
seemed like every five miles at least there was a Walmart. So, <coughs> so they were everywhere, so they weren't as busy. And then we came in here and I just could not understand how come they're stocking shelves at five o'clock in the afternoon when everybody's getting off work. But then I found out that they're just restocking the shelves from the day. And that's what they got to do to keep their shelves stocked. In Utah, they'd have night people and stock everything and they'd pretty much be good for the day. Comments, questions? Well, I appreciate you guys. Probably here because of this topic, possibly. Um, veterans are great, and uh, the war definitely affects them. Be nice to.